What else we had? Um, it's time to talk about my favorite sport, um, boxing. Um, we've got a major fight coming up. It's so major, Joe Bellin may actually watch it. Um, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Oh, is he, is he fighting Pacquiao? That, that's it, right? right? Uh, He's going to fight Pacquiao, right? Listen, Joe, if you follow boxing and you would have watched on ESPN, you would have heard a very important point. And let's go ahead and get this started now because everything involved in boxing, for some idiotic reason, involves Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. That fight will never happen. Well, clearly. Uh, but, but Teddy Atlas is 100% correct. It's because of Bob Arum. Bob Arum will prevent this fight from occurring for various reasons, one of which is money. And if you look at the fact now that Mayweather's fighting Miguel Cotto, Cotto for years has been promoted by top ranking. A lot of people said that Floyd was ducking Miguel Cotto. As soon as Miguel Cotto left top rank, he got a fight with Floyd Mayweather instantly. So it's not that Floyd is afraid to fight these guys, but Bob Arum, Manny Pacquiao has a terrible contract. Bob Arum makes $60 million every time Manny Pacquiao fights. Manny Pacquiao makes barely 20. And the reason that the pot is split in such a way and why money is an issue is because Manny is trying to get as much money for himself because everything gets chopped off the top by Bob Arum. If you listen to ESPN Friday Night Fights, Teddy Atlas was a million times correct. That fight won't happen unless Manny Pacquiao decides to leave top rank. No, no, and and honestly, I believe you. Uh, you know, when we can debate about whether or not uh, Mayweather's afraid of Pacquiao or Pacquiao's dirty or whatever, that none of that's really important vis-a-vis -vis boxing as a whole. I just think this this whole process underlies why boxing is not a real sport, and that oh. is because. No, look, it's not a, the fault of the sport. It is a fault of the fact that the sport has no formal organization. It is a loosely affiliated group of crime bosses. Uh, you know, no, neither does the PGA Tour or like MMA. Like the PGA Tour actually does have a championship now. It do, it does. It has a championship of what? It has a it has the the cup at the end of the year. Oh, that doesn't count for anything. Really? No, because there's nothing remotely like that in boxing. It doesn't have to be. It's an in, it, that's an individual sport. It, that makes yeah. no sense. It's well, like, there's okay, there should be a playoff. You're for absolutely boxing. right, but there's no, there's no, there's no way to and guarantee games to happen in boxing. No, 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 no. no. The, um, there's no formal organization. There's no anything. There, there. I think in in boxing, as far as the, are you saying determining who the champion is, or even like having reliable bouts? The, the fact that this is all negotiated on a on an individual basis. There's no other sport like that. Nick, can you say Mac real quick? What's that? Mac. <laughs> There's no other sport like this. There isn't. Name one. I, 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 it I would be as though when the Hawks were going to play uh, the Celtics that we couldn't guarantee that that would happen. And instead, the Hawks and the Celtics management would have to get together and negotiate over how much uh, money that that game was going to make. There is a There is a governing body in boxing. There is a not there's not a governing body in boxing. There's a governing body in basketball, in football, in baseball. There's even a governing body in you in golf. A, the PGA Tour? Yeah. But but they don't mandate that a certain player has to play in a tournament. That's true. The players voluntarily show up to tournaments, yes. but the tournaments exist. And I understand that that's because it's an invitational kind of sport uh -huh. rather than a one-on-one -on -one sport. Right. But that's just more of a that's less of a warrant for golf being a real sport and and le and not a warrant at all for boxing being a real sport. Boxing. Look, boxing, I loved boxing growing up. I think boxing's a great sport. It just is completely dysfunctional. I, I will I will agree with you, but the dysfunctional part of it your argument only stems from the fact that you can't see Mayweather versus Pacquiao. There no, are a it's million not, fights it's not that. That, Look. that occur that that you don't mention. Right, and those fights talk? do not those fights do not take place in any sort of orderly, predictable fashion. What does that mean? Why does that matter in any way, shape, or form? Because you don't get fighters fighting each other to determine who's better over a longer period of time. What are you talking about? Yeah, there are not trilogies in boxing. Those are all on an ad hoc basis. What in the world yeah. are you talking about? Listen, in, in, in the sport of boxing... <laughs> Do you not understand how your own sport works? In, in the sport of boxing, there is zero need. Did someone else get hurt? No. Uh, Atlanta just beat Pittsburgh. Oh, yes. Tim Hudson back on the... Get another game. meaningless baseball game. Ah. Shout out to John Leach. So, in in boxing, the way the sport works for those like Joe Bellin don't understand, um, when a fight occurs, and if it is close enough... There is a rematch to determine who the better fighter oh, is. Oh, oh, that's that's required. 
It that have to, there's it, some sort of structural it, it requirement for that? Be, it can be mandated by oh, the fans. Oh, so it's not so like basketball you, where they're you, mandate a seven-game series. You, you, uh, you, there's no mandated seven-game series. Not all series goes to yeah, the games. Yeah, but it goes until somebody wins four. No, but, but here's my <laughs> They point. haven't stopped the they, series at three NCAA because they're not making enough not money. not a series. Like, right? The NCAA tournament is a one and done. Yeah, but so it's a whole example, structure. There is no, like, there's no NCAA 2A tournament structure in boxing. So that means college football is not a sport. Well, it doesn't have a good playoff system, but it but does it have it does have agreed upon games, yeah. And the BCS is a kind of games? structure, yeah. So the, like the BCS Boise, is a governing so, body. So the so Boise State, so th- that means that the years in which Boise State and then Auburn the year they were undefeated. So you're okay with the fact that the BCS champion was officially the champion? No, the I think the BCS needs to be a playoff system. I've said that a bunch of times. Right, but but by your but own the, argument, look, they have. Not a sport. You're right. It's less of a real sport than it could be. It's a tragedy. Yeah. Listen. But there's at least a governing body that Listen, does not exist I'll in boxing. I'll give you an example. Last night, there was a fight at 175 pounds to determine who the number one fighter was at 175. Bernard Hopkins versus Chad Dawson. Did they unite the belts in that division? No one cares about belts except for the ring title. Oh. The ring title is officially determined as the champion of that division. What so do you mean example, it's officially determined by who? There's no governing body to determine it. That That is irrelevant. <laughs> the way it works is very simple. If it, it, and you should be able to follow this. If you beat the man that beats the man that beats the man, you are considered the linear champion. That is Bernard Hopkins, or was until last night. Bernard Hopkins had beaten Pascal, who earlier had beaten Chad Dawson, and Dawson had beaten um, Adamek. These these are fights that have taken place, right? That have culminated in who the champion is. Right. And, and Bernard look. Hopkins was the champion. He was then defeated soundly by Chad Dawson. Chad Dawson is the champion at one seventy five. I don't care about title belts. Not anymore because the organizational bodies are dumb. And, and I'll but say this, and, and, and tell legit. me if I'm wrong about this. The more important the fight is in terms of how much it's hyped, the more important the division is, the less likely you are to get that kind of nice linear progression where people fight the person who fights the person who fights the person, and it's all set up like that. Sort of. The, 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 like, for example, right, well, look, the, the we could, this fight. may be a discussion for a time when we're not running at an hour and a half on the podcast. Let's talk about the Cotto Mayweather fight. The, the, Here's my only question mm-hmm. as someone who is a casual fan of boxing these days Does Cotto have a shot? Uh, it, he, he has a puncher's chance. Um, he's, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, he, he, I think, um, I forget what the Vegas odds were, but he may be about a f- six or five to one underdog. But that is a reflection of two things. Number one, what pe- how people view Floyd Mayweather as a fighter. Say what you want to say about him as a person, but as a fighter, he's sure. a phenomenal fighter. Um, Cotto is slower. He is not a true junior middleweight. Um, he just happens to hold a belt at junior middleweight. This is a money fight in a sense of this will not determine who is the best fighter at 154 pounds because Floyd and Cotto will not fight other guys at 154. They're, they're just not built that way. But in terms of pound-for-pound pound rankings, um, this is an interesting fight. Both fighters are in the top 10, um, pound for pound. Look, if Cotto has a game plan to get Florida on the ropes and to kind of rough him up a little bit, a la uh, what uh, Jose Luis Castillo did years ago, he's got a chance. Um, but the Floyd Mayweather we've seen in some of these more recent fights, um, the, the, the advantages tend to go to um, Floyd Mayweather. Is it better for boxing if, if Mayweather wins or loses? Um... It's it's neither here nor there um, in this sense. If Mayweather loses, but it's a controversial loss, you get a rematch, and then you have a bigger fight. If Floyd Mayweather gets blasted, then Miguel Cotto kind of ascends to that level of he's kind of the guy to, to fight. And Miguel Cotto could easily go and sign with top rank and fight Manny Pacquiao for supremacy pound for pound. Um, if Mayweather fights, you kind of just have the status quo wins. You kind of have the status quo. Uh, then it's a question of who does he fight when he gets out of jail. Um, but boxing is one of those sports where the the momentum can be with one fighter and they can instantly shift to another fighter if that person loses. Sure. And in this instance, if Cotto wins, either controversially or convincingly, then they're still buzzed in the fight. Uncle speaking, Nick? speaking of jail, uh, <laughs> we, we all know that, uh, that Mayweather likes to talk about Mayweather. In our friends at Yahoo Sports, uh, conducted an interview with Mr. Mayweather uh, today, and it seems that Mayweather is taken to comparing himself to Martin Luther King Jr. and uh, Malcolm X. Nice. And in reference yeah. to his future jail sentence, he is quoted as saying, I'm pretty sure Martin Luther King's been there and Malcolm X. 
Nice. And I was wondering, is our resident expert, uh, Eric, in boxing, do you stand by Mayweather equating himself um, in his personal and professional life to MLK and yeah. um, Malcolm X? I've said this on the podcast. Um, so a lot of times, Floyd needs to shut up. Um, because he kind of all the time, him. Floyd needs to. No, there's a couple times when he's talking. And if you watch 24 7s it's kind of interesting. His wife is smoking, um, but I, I don't. I'm not really sure what the hell this statement means. I don't think he's comparing himself to them. I'm just, it, it's almost like he's demeaning them because they went to jail. He's like, well, if Martin Luther King and Malcolm X can do it, then I can do it. And I'm like, what? No, I, I'm not really sure what the hell he's talking about. Um, be that as it may, that has no impact on the fight, but. <laughs> You know, Floyd May. Listen, if there's one thing you know about Floyd Mayweather, once a month he's gonna say something stupid, and you know this is one of those times where he literally just says something stupid. So, so we all know Martin Luther King Jr. wrote um, a letter from Birmingham jail. Should, should we expect after uh, after Mr. Way- Mayweather tweet. gets out, uh, no, he'll he, be writing a letter from the Clark County Detention Center? Yeah, he will tweet. Tweet. Yeah, he will tweet. Well, and jail. is that part of his uh, part of the HBO coverage of it as well? Uh, that would be awesome, actually. Yeah. But no, I, like I don't. A lot of people think that Florida is going to jail, and everyone saw showing these images of jail and him having to do eighty-seven days. He yeah. won't do eighty-seven days. No, he will do probably half that with awful good behavior. He will be secluded from the rest of the general population because that's generally which, which jail is start. he going to? Clark County. Clark County. In what? In what state? Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah. He, he I don't easy. know what their history is like, but if he was going to jail in Los Angeles, he would spend three hours there, like Lindsay Lohan did. When they caught her with her car turned around going the wrong way on the freeway with a bag of coke sitting next to that her, does say, out that out. does say a lot about the judicial system. It does. The, the Clark County Detention Center is often featured on that show Jail on Discovery or can't say I've watched True it. TV. Can't or, say I've watched it. Say. I, I'm All right, so Eric, what's your prediction for the fight? Um, listen, Cotto has a is a lot of people want to make the, want to believe that Cotto's going to get blasted. I disagree. Um, I like Cotto's trainer. He's better than he was when he fought Pacquiao. This is why you got to give Mayweather credit. Mayweather's not asking to fight him at a catch weight. Pacquiao did. Pacquiao wanted to catch weight at 154. If you've seen Cotto, he's thick. To, to have to drain himself to get down to that weight, there, there was no way he was going to win this fight. He will be in the best shape he could possibly be in to win this fight. But there are, when everyone has talked about this fight for years, there are substantial disadvantages for Cotto. He throws wild punches. He's not very fast. He's somewhat mechanical and predictable. Floyd should pick him off. I, I expect Floyd to win a unanimous decision or uh, maybe a mid-round or late stoppage. See, I'm, I'm one of these guys that believes that it's better for boxing if Cotto wins because then there's news. Although I'm not sure it's better for boxing in the long term. I think it's better for the meaningfulness of this fight. I think Mayweather going down and, and, and draining boxing of Mayweather, who is one of its few really widely marketable stars... Uh, it's probably not good for boxing in the long term, but it'd be fun. I'd love to believe that that Cotto can can shock the world, but I'm I'm with you. I don't think he can. We'll see. I, I may actually that. watch this fight. Who knows? I've I've got Mayweather, although I have love for Cotto being from Puerto Rico. Um, Listen, good, good good for the good for the Commonwealth. Uh, God bless Puerto Rico. Viva Puerto uh, Rico. Uh, viva, viva Puerto Rico. Um, I, I I I will say this. Um, you've noticed that uh, Floyd Mayweather has not talked despairingly or disrespectful to Miguel Cotto. And that's because Cotto is probably the most liked person in the sport of boxing. Um, a lot of people felt that he was uh, cheated against Margarito um, because Margarito had uh, loaded hand wraps. Um, and they feel sympathetic about the fact that he didn't have to take on Pacquiao, who annihilated him. Um, I feel, I love Miguel Cotto because I can understand the fact of losing a father and what he went through. And, and every time I see that with him, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different kind of move. He's one of my favorite all-time fighters. I just think that style-wise, there, there's some issues there, and I don't know how he overcomes that, but it will be an interesting fight. It will be a more interesting fight than the Miguel Co- than the Manny Pacquiao, Tim through Bat- Bradley <clears throat> fest. Yeah, well that's, I mean, it would be hard for it not to be. All right, is that it? We, we've talked about a lot. Um, um, Uncle Nick, do you have any other random facts we need to know about? Where anything else, uh, anybody from West Virginia involved in uh, presidential policy formation or anything else we need to know? Um, I, I do want to give another shout out to, uh, to, to Georgia State. Uh, Georgia State's women's tennis was played in the CAA tournament uh, at, uh, I believe, Old Dominion uh, in Norfolk, Virginia. I don't know how the, uh, how the women's tennis team did, but I know that they were, uh, they were in the CAA tournament. And uh, I want to shout them out. Well, actually, let's see if we can find that out. Because if you know anything about us here on the podcast, we are all pro. Um, We're all about the breaking news. We broke uh, the news of Whitney Houston's death. We did. For break those of you who are on the podcast, then we also broke the news that Georgia State will be going to the um, 
Going to the Sun Belt. Sun Belt Conference. Uh, it looks like number 63 women's tennis fell 4-3 in an epic CAA final. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do want to give a shout out to uh, to Ms. Whitney Bird, who's a phenomenal tennis player um, for Georgia State. Uh, she's done phenomenal and is actually featured uh, on the Georgia State Sports uh, homepage for women's tennis. Now, Georgia State Sports, generally speaking, we've had some nice uh, successes lately. We, let's mm-hmm. hope we can keep this going forward. We're, we're starting to become a real program. We have, we're getting players arrested. There you go. All right, well... Podcast has been fun. This is the longest podcast ever. We'll break it up into some smaller parts for those of you that don't want to spend 90 minutes listening to us. Uh, but thanks for those of you who did. Tell your friends. Tell your wife, Hatch Kids. And uh, we'll be back.